I've been playing uh, the Fractured But Whole, and I do think that it is an improvement over the sake of truth. I am a huge South Park fan, and I love just exploring that world and getting to know the characters better. Uh, just, just like the Stick of Truth, it feels like you're playing a huge, long episode of the show uh, with a ton of references to the 20-year-plus history of the show. Uh, it, so we already know. It's, it's South Park. The humor's great. It's hilarious. So I'm not going to go too much into that or the story. What I want to talk about is the difference between this and the Stick of Truth, which is mostly in the gameplay mechanics. Now, obviously, yeah. you've switched out um, mythological stuff, elves, dwarves, for superheroes now. Now, a lot of people are like, Can't, isn't that just superficial? There could have just been a patch for the other game. But it actually changes the gameplay quite a bit. In fact, this actually runs on a grid system. People familiar with the Stick of Truth kept comparing it to a JRPG system, a la Final Fantasy. And, and it was, Pro to be fair, it was pretty much that verbatim. Yeah, it was a turn-based JRPG. This game is on a grid a la, you know, Fire Emblem and XCOM and those kinds of strategy games. So there's a lot of different strategy involved when now you're playing on a grid and you can go around your enemy or shoot from a distance. Uh, and if you, if you guys are at all familiar with the grid-based strategy game, this is a lot more like that. And I actually enjoyed that. I think that's a huge improvement and I've really been enjoying the gameplay. So I think right off the bat, uh, it's it's just technically better, technically better than the Stick of Truth. This I've actually even enjoyed the story. So I haven't. I've only been. A f I'm only a few hours into it, but already so far, I'm more uh, interested in the story that's going on. I was of course interested in the story of the Stick of Truth because it was South Park, but it was all just kind of funny. And this is funny too. But I feel like it kind of has a stronger presentation with where the game is actually going. So, Not to mention the whole entire thing is, you know, very relevant in terms of it's pretty much a giant jab at the current state of, like, superhero cinematics and all oh, this yeah. sort of stuff, which, of course, is a hilarious topic of discussion that we visit all the time. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so the idea that... riffs on the cinematic universe, uh, you know, kind of uh, motifs and uh, what has now become kind of stereotype for different superhero stuff on, in media... Uh, and I really appreciate that as well. I would say that if if uh, if the Stick of Truth was an eight out of ten, I give this Fractured Butthole just an eight point five. It's, yeah, that's about where I'm at too. Yeah, it's um, it's just a little bit better than the Stick of Truth, but it's definitely a game you don't want to miss. It's 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 a linear improvement in the idea that it's just a better presentation or whatnot. If you're not familiar with the South Park universe and you get uh, thrown in because you're like, ah, I've never really watched South Park, but. Uh, I'm I'm gonna try out one of the video games. Um, maybe you should watch a little South Park first because oh, yeah. uh, if you're not familiar with the kind of humor that South Park lays down in order to make its commentary, you are going to be appalled. <laughs> you're gonna be caught very off guard by just the absolutely uh, the absolute raunchiness of the game. So uh, familiarize yourself with South Park uh, uh, before you jump into this game. Oh, uh, are, that's absolutely fair to say. Yeah, if you don't yeah. appreciate the humor in South Park, you're either too sensitive to it no. or you yeah. just don't like the satire of it. This game's not for you. If you like South Park, you'll like the game. You know, and, and you know, because so, some people like South Park and didn't like the first one, I really think that you'll like the second one because it just plays better. But, it does. again, everything is... We do... Is, we should speak on the idea of why it's getting review-bombed on Steam and, like, what a lot of the controversies are surrounding it, too. Because oh, right. outside of just the idea that it is a game that is playable and good and, you know, all this sort of stuff, there's the idea that a lot of people are pretty down on it right now for kind of some reasons that have nothing to do with the gameplay. Yeah, it's uh, it's having a lot of PC technical difficulties that have most of them have already been smoothed out with updates. Right. And I've been playing on Steam, and I've had no problems actually. Personally. Yeah, it um, uh, you know, we we've revisited this a few this conversation a few times about UPlay and about you know Ubisoft's particular sort for starters. It's just another example of a time that Ubisoft put out a game on release day that struggled to function on a statistically significant number of, of PCs. Yes. So this is a really, really tired conversation at this point. Ubisoft I, has a pretty bad track record in this regard. I was really irritated about the Uplay thing at first, but what they've done this time, and they may have even done this before, but I haven't played an Ubisoft game on PC in a while, 
is that you have to log into your Uplay account once and then connect it to your Steam, and then you only have to access the game through Steam from that point forward. That's that's nice because I got tired of you know working with uh, both, and it's a minor irritant and whatnot. Um, I would argue that DLC packaging is what destroyed Ghost Recon Wildlands, which was another big Ubisoft release. And I know that Watch Dogs 2, which otherwise probably would have been a bit more popular, was also riddled with it. So I'm, I guess I, I'm cautiously optimistic to see that it, we don't need to, be, we don't seem to be bombing it to quite the same degree. We do have a rather pricey looking season pass that's available. And again, season passes are just one of those things that are, I think at this point, 70%, 30% in failure of, or in favor of not necessarily a great investment. Um, I've bought the season pass on a few games that I have deemed would like, ah, yes, I'm happy about that. I'm glad I did that. I don't know that I feel that way too much about most of the season passes though. So we are yet here again with the season pass conversation, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. And yeah, I, I don't know what else to say on that other than the idea that like I, I remain extremely wary of any game that puts out a day one season pass. Um, it, it just raises more questions than answers. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's there are issues and problems everywhere, and that's why you guys need to be watching Video Game Talk live every Thursday <laughs> on the Javers channel because we're we'll uh, yeah, all it's, about it's, them ad nauseum. We get into this big conversation about, you know, just sort of the commercial, the current state of kind of the commercial aspects of producing video games. Because um, it's completely separate from this idea of, like, what are video games playing like and looking like today? There's this whole different conversation about the economics as far as, like, how are they being sold and distributed and how is content um, uh, being put out behind paywalls? What are the good things about it and the idea that we're seeing, you know, life breathed into games after the fact? versus you know where do we see games being deliberately cut short in order to sell content after the fact in order to drive up you know the cost considerably above these 60 dollars margins um is that worth it is it not worth it is it a good thing is it a bad thing that's a it, south park um just exists as one big current focal point in a giant spectrum of that conversation. Don't forget to watch our entire Video Game Talk podcast. And as always, please subscribe to the Rich Alvarez channel and hit that little bell thing that gives you the notifications. That way you actually see these videos. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.